from Appleton, Wisconsin. This is APTV. Welcome to APTV episode 507 for Thursday, September 14th, 2023. This week we have banter, news, updates, a new pen from Esterbrook, gorgeous sailor manio sets, timeless cross ball points, a contest winner, a new contest, plus two new Lamis that are coming soon. Hey, Lisa. Did you hear about the guy that fell in the infinity pool? I did. Yeah? <laughs> no. It took him forever to get out. Nice. All right, today's location bumper, Draft Gastro Pub, just one and a half miles up the road at Draft Gastro Pub. You will find craft cocktails, craft beers, and high-end whiskeys served alongside innovative, upscale menu items, and it is worth a visit. I don't think I've ever been there. Me either. Where is it? It's just one and a half miles up the road. <laughs> Which road? I have no idea. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Justin, Justin where is maybe it? Justin knows. <laughs> <laughs> Eric flew the drone over it. <laughs> we threw them. But anyway, that's that's nearby. Okay. All right. Um, we should look into that. Uh, tomorrow, Friday, September 15th, is the first night of Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is the Jewish New Year. Uh, the millennia-old holiday is an occasion for reflection and is often celebrated with prayer, symbolic foods, and the blowing of the traditional horn called a shofar. Tuesday, September 19th, Probably the most important holiday on the calendar. International Talk Like a Pirate Day. This is a par- <laughs> <laughs> this is a parody holiday created in 1995 by John Bauer and Mark Summers. Uh, it started out as an inside joke between two friends, but spread when Bauer and Summers sent a letter about their invented holiday to the American syndicated humor columnist Dave Barry in 2002. And of course, the most important thing is go to Arby's on that day. I think I need a high-end whiskey for that. Um, lots of news. So there will be a vintage mailer going out Friday, September 15th. That's that be tomorrow. tomorrow. Yep. Um, and there's some cool stuff on here, including, I'm going to mix it up and go out of order. Okay. Just because I can. Uh, some vintage ink bottles. This one actually has kind of a bit of a fond memory. Uh, We bought this when we were on um, our working vacation in Florida. It was a nice, nice watermelon I was dog-sitting, and we uh, escaped for a couple hours to do some antiquing and found this in an antique store. Um, What makes this unusual is that usually the label is not nearly this intact. There's a little bit of an ink mark on here, but... Often you find these with the label all scratched up, peeled off, flaking off. So this is really cool. I think the most important part on this one, though, yes. is the pen that's pictured in the label on the back okay. is actually an eyedropper. So this makes it a very early bottle. Um, it's not a lever filler, so it's an early uh, early eyedropper pen. Uh, and the bottle has a nice pour spot. Yeah. So that was really cool. We were very excited when we saw that. We were wandering through several different antique stores, hadn't found um, too much of anything for us, sent my mom a lot of weird pictures of crazy uh, furniture, but uh, this was fun. And uh, what else do you have over there? Uh, So going up in size, uh, we've got this lovely little Sanford's ink bottle. So this is a half pint. Uh, And then it's got ads in the side for Utopian Paste. Uh, library paste, and then uh, there's another ad on this side here. But a uh, lovely jar with, with the original lid. <clears throat> and then, of course, this is the screw cap. Oh, how funky. It comes off so you can pour. It's squeaky. It's squeaky. It's very cool. <clears throat> All right. Uh, moving up a size, this size is uh, reminiscent of uh, some of those Schaefer, uh, Schaefer bottles that you could get. Um, another, uh, this is a diamond autograph fluid. Now, this one does have a little bit of damage to the, the label, but what makes this so cool is uh, it advertised that it's for fountain pens or for steel pens. So you've got a, an eyedropper, a black chase hard rubber uh, eyedropper on this side with gold-filled bands. And then on this side, you've got what actually looks like 
um, it's a, a retractable uh, steel dip pen on this side. So uh, again, it's got uh, a hard rubber uh, cap here. Now there's a crack in the cap, um, but uh, you unscrew that and then you would pour it. So that's kind of nice. And the uh, the piece to bad the resistance, the bad boy, the 32 ounce diamond, almost perfect label on the front. I mean, it's a little dirty, but um, really almost 100% intact. I think there's a little tiny, tiny, tiny piece missing there. Um, We've got the diamond logo stamped into the glass. That's cool. And then on the back, we have this great extra uh, label with, uh, again, an eyedropper fountain pen. So these, these are early, early bottles. We've got the diamond logo on top here. Now this, the cork has shrunk a little bit, so it would need to be recorked if you really wanted to use it, but I, I can't imagine you're gonna use this. Um, but really a lovely, lovely bottle um, for diamond inks. Uh, so this this one's really a great one. So we've got those, um, and of course there's one of each, and that's it. Uh, and we've got some vintage pens. Um, I brought two, and then I brought three more that are going to be coming out probably next week. I really admire your restraint. Usually you'll bring out like I've only got two trays. Well, I've only got, well. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, come on. Right? We've got we, we've got you know we've got a lot of nice pencils. Um, and uh, a couple other things coming. But uh, th this one I thought was rather significant. We should talk about uh, very early Conklin Crescent. This is a clipless Crescent filler. Um, I have to laugh uh, the number of times people look at this thing and ask me if it's a Visconti because Visconti made a Crescent filler. Um, early, early pen, 1905 era, hard rubber. Uh, what makes this unique, it's a model P5S, which is very uncommon. Uh, number five size nib, which is quite large for this size of pen, uh, and it's flexible. Very, very rare pen. Um, second earliest uh, Conklin imprint on the Crescent, and in really, really excellent shape for its age. Very visible imprints, but a lovely, lovely pen. Um, if you're looking for a, a flexible nib pen, um, that you, know, you should be careful with it, of course, but this is a, a very, very nice piece. Um, Next up, this one is, is, is quite nice. I like this a lot. The Pastel Green Crest uh, Snorkel by Schaefer. Uh, white dot, very, very nice gold fill cap. We've got the two-tone Triumph nib. Um, of course, it's a snorkel filler, which is super cool and uh, fully restored and ready to go. So we've got that. Those are in the mailer. Uh, and then I've got uh, three new pieces that just came in this week that I wanted to mention. Um, this one's funky. They will be they will be coming. You know, of course you can you can always call. Uh, I'll, I'll do the do this one first. Okay. That one's not as funky. Uh, and you're gonna look at this and you go, oh, that, that's cool. That's a Lamy Safari. Why is Brian talking about it? This is the very first Savannah Green. So this is the original 1980 edition. Um, it's 100% there. We have the original unmarked nibs because the original nibs did not have uh, nib markings on them. And this one has the original aluminum Ooh, converter cool. in it. Now, in noting that um, this converter is very, very special for this pen. Um, and from what I understand, I haven't checked it yet, that this does not fit in current models and the current model does not fit in here. But, we'll, we'll, but this is a working uh, original converter, um, original pen. Um, very, very rare up until um, the remake a couple of years ago. Uh, these are almost unobtainium. So if you're looking for an original 1980 Savannah Green for your collection, uh, here it is. Uh, I've never seen the aluminum converter. We, we've had one, one before, only one. Okay. And actually, I don't think I sold it. I kept it. Um, All right, do that. That's funky. Next up, yeah, I know you're going to think this is a joke, but when I saw this, I knew exactly what this was. It's a joke. Um, this here uh, looks like a platinum gathered. It is actually, in fact, uh, an actual platinum. Uh, I believe they made this in 1987. It's called the Glamour. Um, and it has this funky, cool <laughs> little nib. And it's actually, uh, it posts, it's actually quite comfortable to write with. Um, it has a, a little bit chunkier of a, of a grip. It's a big ass pen. Um, it does have a little bit of a taper, but it has this funny nib on it. It's a gold plated steel nib. Uh, what, what actually what's very interesting about this is it's cartridge only, but it's not platinum cartridge. It's international cartridge only because the barrel is so short. 
Um, so very unusual pen. They made it in a couple of colors. They made it in black. They made it in a pastel blue. There was a light rose. Um, but this is the black version, and it's really, really it's in, adorable in pretty exceptional condition. Like I say, it's, it's actually a pretty good writer. Snap cap. Um, so if you're looking for a fun little platinum to add to your collection, there it is. Um, Let me hold that. Isn't that fun? So this it's is... palm size. Yeah. What do we have that's... Pro Gear Slim? Yeah. So here's a Sailor Pro Gear Slim, and here it's, is... It's fun size. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's fun, fun size. size. This is adorable. It is. It is really cool. Yeah. And make a great little flashlight. Uh, and then last but not least, now, uh, I think last week... I don't week, understand this. What, what is there not to under, what don't you understand? I don't understand the tire. So this is uh, <laughs> Carrera. It's, you know, it's it, it's all about cars. So last week we had a Mont Blanc. I think we talked about a Mont Blanc Carrera. Uh, I got another one in this week, uh, actually with the matching ballpoint and mechanical pencil. Uh, but I got another Mont Blanc Carrera fountain pen. And this time with the original base. And so this is actually, uh, it's actually marked Mont Blanc Carrera on in its actual rubber tire. Uh, and it has this cool little little base where you can put the cap and then you give it a little twist That's and it notches in place. And funky. then this is a desk pen. Become, it, you can have it on your desk and serve as a desk pen. Cartridge converter, steel nib. It was kind of a, a low end Mont Blanc in its day, but really cool. It's got the, the snowflake on the, the bottom. It's got a metal uh, aluminum cap. I'm not going to break it. Oh, look at that. There you go. Yeah, isn't that neat? Yeah. That, but a tire. That's it's a tire. Just, it's actual rubber, yeah. It is. If you get three of them, you can make a car. <laughs> yeah, you put it in and then you slide it. Yeah. That's very cool. So um, in, addition to the, in addition to the one that is actually, uh, there is one. Uh, will be in the vintage mailer. It is not this one. So the if, if you're interested in the one with the tire, uh, this one actually I believe has an extra fine nib, whereas the other one is more of a, a medium, finer medium. Um, this one will be clearly shown with the tire. So the one that's up there now, if you're interested in this one, you can give us a call. It should be up within about a week or so. But there's going to be, uh, I think there were 96 uh, six pens all in the vintage mailer. About 50 of them are, are brand new. So. Well, no wonder the creative team hates us. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay got them done uh, post-haste. Awesome. She got them done post-haste. Did a good job. Her. Yeah. So uh, so that's it for Vintage for this week. We've All got right. uh, Sailor Pro Gear King of Pen Christmas Spice Tea, I believe, coming yes. in. Um, King of Pen. There's two of them. Uh, is really a very attractive color combination. Uh, they're discounted for the Sailor Don't Miss the Boat sale. Um they're beautiful. They're popular. I would keep one, but I'm not going to. Um, Ooh, I have that on video. You do have it on video. Okay. Uh, and this is a wonderful opportunity to get a king of pen. Oh, at, at a killer at, price. At, at an amazing price. Yes. And, and like I say, it's it's a really lovely, lovely color combination. I really like it. And had there not been another king of pen, like every year for the past three years, I've, I've, I've taken a, a don't miss the boat king of pen. And had there not been... <laughs> Something else. The stormy sea, uh, not uh, the stormy sea. Then I would have probably gotten this one. So right. uh, there are two more coming. Uh, they come in medium nib only. No broads, no fines. They've never been a fine in a king of pen, but right. only a medium nib. So uh, and whatever's left for the don't miss the boat sale, um, we have. Uh, there's a yeah, I've updated. Uh, update the. I've been updating the website. So as as things sell, I take them off. So what's there is what is available. Um, anything that sells out, if it's not there, we no longer have it. Key line right. is now gone. 4 a.m. You know things like that. So. Right. Because sailor is sold out, or there are yep. many things that they are sold out of, yep. and so it's whatever we have is what we have. There's still a good. There's still a good selection actually um, uh, up there. So if you're looking for. Um, uh, a, a sailor at a good price. This is the there, time. There's, there, there's a lot of them. So And there's only 102 more days until Christmas. Eric loves that. All right. You got some Hobonichi. I do have some Hobonichi. I am a big, big fan. Um, even though I said I wasn't going to take one, I... You did. You took like two or three things the I other day. I took a cousin. What did you take? And you took I, a cousin. I took a cousin because last year I took the leather um, Celeste blue cover, although the water green is just to die for this year. Um, and then I took um, 
the Can I get you one for Christmas? Just, A5, yeah. <laughs> just to get me to shut up. The A5 um, little two-pack of notepads, which I love because they're so thin. Those are just Oh, great. yeah, yeah. Those yeah. are great. Um, um, but a couple room. things I wanted to show, um, especially this year since they broke up the covers and the planners. Number one, just order a planner. We have a few left. Just you want one. <laughs> you know you do. You know you're agonizing over it. Do I, don't I? Which size? Just buy them. Um, just join me. Just get it. A uh, couple covers. Some of these are really cool, but maybe you can't see everything about them from the pictures. This is the blue blue. Um, it's like denim. denim. It's a dark denim, like your best jeans. And then this front piece, this flap, is a different material. So it's got a little bit of a, almost looks like, those of you who do needlework, almost looks like a cruel pattern. Not mean, but it's a needlepoint technique. So is um, that a snap? Is a snap. Snap, okay. which you gotta love. Uh, and then, of course, inside, um, your typical... Like vinyl or what is that? No, it's a cotton. The cotton? Okay. Actually, it's like a, like a twill. Really hmm. kind of a nice material. Your normal inside with your credit card pockets, a um, couple different flaps, your bookmarks. So that's... Um, I, I found it to be very interesting. Uh, let's see. We're going to go to Syracuse Colors, the uh, blue and orange. Go SU. I know. I just need to get one. So I have my Syracuse well, colors. you don't have an A6. No, but... Do we uh, have them left in A5? Probably have them in A5. I don't know. Keep going. Uh, I'm going to save that one. I didn't take this one out of the package because Justin said I could leave it and it wouldn't crinkle too much. This is the gingham. That's kind of nice. Yeah. So gingham on the front. I like that mint, mint yeah. color. The mint color is really pretty. Um, again, your typical interior, but they just, Hobonichi every year does so many really cool covers. Um, and then there's this one. I know we featured it in the mailer, the Twinkle Tweed. This is just freaking cool. Is that leather? What is that? I believe so. That's yes. It's a nice. So nice inside style. is a really pretty sage green, but the outside is a sparkly tweed in colors of. Pink and peach, there's like a little brownish yellow, uh, a brighter green, and it sparkles. You're not going to, you're going to notice that that's where you're You are going to know, yeah. yeah, this thing is yeah. just really It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Right. And then a couple other things. The day free, this is new for us. Did you grab one of these? Oh, you took one out. Uh, it was open. It was open? Somebody must have looked at it. Oh. This was in the store. And so... The day free is cool. It comes in the A5 or the A6. In the front, you have nothing but monthly calendars and then graph paper. That's, That's it. it. Yeah. I, monthly I calendars. I, need this. I think I need this in my life. Do you want to I, might get, I might get two. I might get two this year. See? Just get it. Well, you know I, you I, haven't, I haven't been able. I've, we've been so busy, I haven't actually looked at this. So it's just, again, nothing but your monthly calendar. Then you could just use for it for your, notes if you want. Yeah. Your big picture, you know. Lisa's birthday, et cetera, Never anniversary, forget that. Never forget et cetera, that. not. Uh, and then nothing but graph paper. That's it. And so if you <laughs> are this. like, hang on, the rest of us, uh, <laughs> and you don't maybe journal or have things every day, and you hate the idea of having a planner that, you know, you have all these empty pages, um, this may be for you. There is a timetable in the back. You can put your schedule. And then there's some graph paper. I like um, how they label it graph paper. There's, I know. there's been like 300 <laughs> yeah. pages of graph paper before it, and then they label this one graph yeah. paper. Uh, what else is in the back? Does it have your top 100 in there? Is your favorites? Favorites. So okay. you're, you know, you keep track of your favorite movies, books, music, food, or restaurants, um, shopping, and celebrations. I guess that's what hand clapping that must be. is. And, and, and this one is in, this is Japanese well, only. So there's your top. I don't know what it is about my 100, but I just like the idea. So you can keep track of my 100. 100 great things you did during the year, great places you went to eat, people you saw. 100 reasons I love you. That's, that's going to be a. Can, <laughs> can, can you fill that up today? I don't and know. And then a bunch of uh, other little things in <laughs> she here. She didn't say that anything. Are cute. And she then. Just kept going on. I did. Just went a right past things, that. Gifts. So. 
So, and that, all that stuff's in the, notes, that's yeah. all in the back of and every a serial number. Every that just uh, every Hobonichi. Uh, the Let me other see that. Give me that one. Right. I might take that one. I'm also looking at the inserts. Now, I don't know about you, but some of the inserts are just really so clever and creative. Oh, and so. these pages are numbered too. Yeah. So there you go. Anyway, that's the day free. We found one that was open here in the store, and I thought we should just take that out. Couple other things, um, accessories. These sticky notes. I know that the description says that these are designed to fit the graph, but I just kind of wanted to show you size-wise. Um, they really do. These, some of these are tiny, so these are cool. Um, the index stickers are a lot of fun. So if you find that you can't quite flip to the right page, you can get the index stickers and it'll you put mark your months. Is that what your these, months, these are month yes. markers? So your One January through, 12. Yep. through December. Yep. Mm -hmm. They should have, actually, they should have two yes. sets of 12 since it starts in, most of them start in December. Uh, your supplement, your weekly supplement, um, these are great. I might need one of those two. A lot of people have added these on, especially if you're doing the day free and you just want your extra. Um, I'm a huge fan of the Hobonichi little notebooks. Tiny, little tiny notebook. These are just great. They're super, super skinny. I keep one in my wallet. Um, these are great if you just want to jot something down, um, but they're, they're super, super skinny. And then just a couple um, of the weeks, because if you're not sure if the other ones are too fat for you or too big or too heavy, the weeks is a great, great option. So you've got, um, on the far side, you have the whole week in horizontal blocks, and then you just have graph paper. Yeah, sure. This one is one of my favorites, the uh, pale blue green. It's just really pretty. And right now, I could use a little sangria. So that one's really cute. And then the week's mega is the same exact layout, just more graph paper in the back. And uh, it's really hard to see. It's but thicker. it is significantly it's thicker. thicker yeah. So, um, lots of pretty colors. You could achieve almost the same with a regular weeks and a set of memo pads. Yes. Too, almost. Yes. So. But this way, it's all together. It's all together. And then you throw in a cover, and you can tuck the notebook in there. there and go. Bob's your uncle. What's the best smelling insect? A deodorant. Esterbrook. Esty, new just in, uh, this is called Punch. Um, it's just released today. Uh, gold trim is a bright a purple pink. Kind of a fuchsia uh, color. With white marbled acrylic resin and uh, a gold plated solid palladium clip. Of course, a number six nib, uh, which here is invisible because <laughs> uh, I take it out. They can be swapped with other Yovo nibs, of course. The cushion cap is great. It keeps it from drying out. If you do it just right. It pops, jumps up. Yep. In Chicago, I'd had that surprise people. Do it, a do it this times. way, and yeah. Then, yeah. Pops out. Shoot at out uh, these do work with the Esterbrook MV adapter, the modern to vintage, so that you can swap out the section and then use um, a vintage Esterbrook nib if you have one. Yep. Uh, and these are uh, a limited run. They're limited. They're not a limited edition. There's no serial number, uh, but they're a limited run. Um, when they're gone, they're gone. When they're gone, they're gone. We don't have we don't have a ton of them. So, um, international cartridge converter, of course, included. Fun color. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a bright, bright. Kind of a springy color. I like. Almost, it. yeah, yeah. I was gonna say that, but it's here. We are in the fall. Right. So anyway, that's released today. Uh, get it while it lasts. Uh, we've got some new sailors. We do. Um, the Sailor Pro Gear Mono. Two, two. Sets. yes, yes. Two. Right. I don't think we have them designated as such, no. but this is the second set yes. of Progear Manios. Um, all the color combinations are inspired by different inks in the Manio line. Um, some of them are rhodium plated and some are um, gold plated for the trim and the accents. So it just depends on the color. They are packaged with a 50 ml bottle of Manio ink, so that's kind of cool. Uh, so we've got moss. That's nice. That's a nice, nice combination. A very light gray with a pretty light blue, kind of an aqua color. 
super pretty. Wisteria is deep magenta. This is kind of a pale rose colored and a darker, like a plummy red color. It's kind of a dusty red. This one's pretty violet. This is nice. Nice. Um, I wouldn't have, I probably wouldn't have called it violet. But. Um, apparently it has to do with the colors of wild violets that grow by the riverside, okay. by the riverbank. Okay. Um, and so wild violets, I guess, are bluer than purple okay. that we traditionally think of as. Yeah, because it's, it's, uh, it's original- definitely like a tealy barrel with a, a dusty blue. Um, yeah, it's a great, it's a solid, really solid combination. Pretty. And then especially with the, the finial at the yeah. top. Really, really, really fun finials on all of these. A little something different. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have? Iris. Iris. Pink and purple. Purple barrel. Um, kind of a muted pink. It's not bad. Cap. Mm-hmm. That one has gold trim. And then grass is uh, green and kind of a tealy aqua. It's almost frosted. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of Bright the, uh, green, and then I don't know that I'd even call that blue. I guess it's kind of a turquoisey, yeah. but really fun mm-hmm. combination. It reminds me of the, um, the transparent green a little bit. A little bit, yep. Uh, so as of this recording, we have the moss and the grass with medium nibs, and the wisteria, the violet, and the iris with medium fine. So the 14 karat nibs, these are Pro Gear Slims. Um, if there's other nibs you're looking for, uh, shoot us an email, give us a call. Oh, so those are Pro Gear Slims. Yes, these are Slims, yes. yeah. These really brought me back 40 odd <clears throat> years ago. <laughs> Careful. Cross Classic Century Ballpoints. We have the Chrome, <clears throat> sorry, and the Metalist. So these are... For those of us of a certain age, these are the skinny, um, classic cross pens that everybody thinks of when you think cross pen. Uh, many of us receive these as uh, graduation gifts, confirmation gifts, um, things like that. When we were graduating high school or whatever, um, often with your name on it. Or a logo on it. Or a logo, yeah. And a clip, yeah. And so... I have several of these, actually, in my collection. These are... Um, this one is the chrome. So chrome body with tiny little um, engraved lines. Little lines, yeah. And a matching chrome clip. So... And then the metalist... Uh, Cross calls the metalist is a, essentially is a chrome pen with gold trim. So that's... They get it available in the metalist. These are really great. I, I You know, if, if you have a, a planner or something that has a really thin... Yes. Uh, you know, like the the like term has those pocket clips. Yes. The, they have they have two pocket clips. They have an XL and then they have a regular one. But the regular one is so thin that you can only put a clip in. But you could you could probably tuck that in there. But you have a lot These of great. planners that have have small loops. Hey, a ridiculously a ridiculously small. Loop in small some yeah, cases, and you know, yeah. and then these are so popular. I wouldn't be surprised if if most of those loops were designed around this actual pen. Yes. Uh, but it's a classic. Um, and, it, and it's good looking. I, I forgot how good looking this medalist is. It's really something. Um, and then these use, uh, the ballpoints use the classic cross um, ballpoint refill. You know, the one, the long skinny one that screws, screws in. in. And I like that it screws in. Yes. I, I like, I like refills that, that thread in. You know, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about that, spring. that, that silly spring and making sure you get it in the spring. And if you don't get it right. in the spring, you just stretch it the wrong yeah. way. So anyway, these, these are in. Um, and... Nice gift box for yeah. Christmas. Yeah, absolutely. These make great gifts. A book fell on my head. I can only blame my shelf. We had a contest yes. last week. Oh, I didn't even read anything. What has been your longest in time or distance road trip? Ugh. Um, Rich Johnson says, my longest was darn near 24 hours going back to base on the East Coast for my grandmother's funeral in Michigan. Got trapped in the Pennsylvania mountains for probably 12 hours in a yep. snow and fog storm. Usually that was a 12 to 16 hour drive, depending on how brave I would be and how many stops. Have a great week. Yeah, nice. yeah. That snow and fog, I mean, it reminds me of one time coming back from um, an event in Chicago, and I think it took me eight hours to get home. 
in yeah. Chicago, and normally I three. I felt so, so bad. It was awful. Because we I think I made you drive. Well, we were, you know, I, I turned around, we did the event, and I turned around, I came home, and there's three lanes coming home, and we all, everybody was single file, you know, fishtailing all the way through, so. Uh C.H. Taug says, great show, and congrats on getting the new addition to your collection. Um, if you're not sure what that means, it's the um, hopefully final hopefully. sixth um, statue in our Schaefer statue collection. My longest road trip was about 20 years ago. We drove from Montreal to Lunenburg, Nova Scotia, to visit a good friend who had recently moved there. Spending time with him made the 13-hour drive worthwhile. Corinne... Ewan Ellen says, uh, my longest road trip was from Southern California to Washington State. Uh, that's a long drive. Yeah. My mom and I went up to visit family when I was in college, and we took the scenic route along the ocean all the oh, way up. Beautiful. It was such a beautiful drive. I have such fond memories of that trip. Oh, that's got to be a 20-plus hour trip, huh? California's a long That's like state. driving, you know, when you, when you, if, if you live in South Florida and getting out of Florida, oh, it's yeah. like 12 or 13 hours that just to get Georgia. out of the state. Yeah, it's, it's like awful. halfway awful. there. Lady J says, congratulations on the new statue. I really enjoyed hearing the story. Thanks for sharing. I received my new Hobonichi Weeks cats, and it's so adorable. Um, thanks for the extra efforts to send it out so quickly. My longest road trip was from Alabama to oh Banff National Park in Alberta, Canada. Whole extended family, great trip. Wow. Did we, we, should, we, should have, we should crown a winner on some of these. That's a long way. I don't Especially know where Banff is, but that's a long way. With if Isn't you went, like, like with all the family. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Nova oh, Scotia, oh. I don't know where it is. Is no. that straight north? That's what's up. Alberta? Yeah, that's a long way. Yeah. That's a long way. I'm tired already. Steve Moss says, okay, this contest is up my alley. Well, I've taken several road trips of 5,000 plus miles and a honeymoon what? trip of 3,000 miles on a pair of Harleys. My longest solo road trip was a nonstop, except for gas, trip of 1,850 miles in 28 hours and 20 minutes from St. George, Utah, back to Wisconsin. Yeah, I was nuts. Yeah. And that sounds like, you know, I have a I have an old uh, high school friend who does this this Harley thing. Oh, right? yeah, calls, you told me like, about I think that. it's called the Iron Butt or something like that, where they have these things where they, they ride for like two days straight or some crazy thing. It's got to be it's dangerous. Nuts. It's nuts. It's nuts. So let me just stop. Mm -hmm. A honeymoon trip of 3,000 miles on, on a, a pair, pair of, of Harleys. Harleys. Okay. <laughs> You're on your own, honey. You go, <laughs> you can, guys. Good you can for go you and ride guys. yourself. Uh, Michelle Stevenson says, y'all saw me in the middle of our longest road trip. Five weeks, seven states. From Missouri up to northern Minnesota, then over to western North Dakota, back across those states to Oshkosh, down to Missouri again to get my nephew back to Wisconsin oh for the pen party. Thank you, Michelle. Um, oh, yeah, and the big air show. I went home with a new Twisby and that lovely Palmer House Retro 51. Maybe not as rare as your Schaefer statue, but still precious to me. Nice Very road trip. cool. That's a heck of a all That's, over yeah. the place. James Byron says the wife and I traveled on a whim to Las Vegas from Philly to see Godsmack in concert. She surprised surprised me with front row tickets, and I caught a pick out of the air and got a thumbs up from the lead singer Sully Erna. Yeah, oh, that's cool. cool. That's cool. That makes it. That's memorable. a long trip too. From Philly to Vegas. That's, that's, that's yeah. wow. Ed Riley says, oh, look at that. Nice. My longest road trip was a bicycle trip from San Diego, California to Worcester, Mass. in 1986. We left on June 1st, arrived July 16th, and rode for 36th of the days with 10 days off the bike to visit friends and family. It was challenging but also therapeutic. Come on, Ed. No, no stats. How many miles was that? Average speed. <laughs> Come on, let me know. We're dying was it all. on Strava? Was it on Strava? <laughs> if it's not on Strava, it doesn't count. And yes, I am on Strava. Steve Ruckel says, from 1991 to 2011, we drove 46 times round trip from south. This is amazing. Southeastern Virginia to the Emerald Coast of Northwest Florida. Each 15-hour drive was straight through, and the total miles driven in 20 years was 86,020 miles. That is almost three and a half times around the circumference of the earth. I'm taking a nap. Well, you should. Wow. 46 times. Yeah. Um, Maki Miyazaki says, happy Thursday. Longest road trip was from L.A. to Detroit and back within about four days to move a friend to L.A. Yeah, that's, wow. pretty, that's pretty quick. I mean, you know, and... You yeah. get serious points for that kind of a drive to help somebody move. Helping yeah. a friend move is a lot already. 
within so. four days. So she got out there in two days and back. Yeah, and I think we did LA, Wisconsin, LA in about two two days yeah. once the once, first time. Yeah. yeah, I was on a mission to just get there. Uh, we have a winner, uh, Bruce Youngquist. Congratulations. Uh, my l- longest road trip was back in 1978 when I was 20. Two friends and I drove from Minneapolis to Sturgis, South Dakota, climbed a butte, rode horses in Wyoming, and somehow made it back to Minneapolis for work on time, all <laughs> on a three-day weekend. I ought to be so young and energetic. Wow. wow. That's, a, that's a good, that's a, that's a pretty good haul. You know, kids these days just don't know what it was like to get off work. You go out all night. You, you go leave to work. Thursday night. And, yeah. yeah. You, and, and you still make it to work. So... Congratulations, Bruce. Uh, write to eric at andersonpens.com, and he'll take care, care of uh, getting that credit on your Anderson Pens account. We have a new survey. Ooh, new survey. Uh, have you ever been, have you ever gifted or been gifted a cross pen? Oh, yeah. And what was the occasion? Like, I believe I got one as a high school graduation gift. Um, and you have several. Uh, let us know in the comments section. One commenter will be chosen at random to win a $20 credit on their Anderson Pens account. I am I have several, but they're my father's because he used to get them. He was a pilot, and he would get them with the, the logo of his plane on mm-hmm. the clip. Um, well, and he kept his pilot logs, and those were pretty small. They were, yeah. They and were, I think they, they were, had they a were small... like a, They were this size. Yeah. They were like, I have them all, actually. Um, but yeah, so he, he recorded all his, it was either with the cross, he had, he actually only used ever three, three types of writing instruments. He used cross classic centuries. Uh, he did use Parker jotters, uh, for a while. And I have, I, I lost one of them, which makes me angry, but that's okay. Uh, and he used auto point. Oh, the double, the double ended pencils. He used those, so. Are we allowed to talk about this? We are this? allowed to talk all about right, this. All right, cool. If not, well. Justin will just, like, bleep us out. There you go. The Lamy Studio in Special Edition Rose. Uh, so the body and cap are a light pink matte lacquer with uh, your typical bright chrome clip and steel nib. Comes with um, the Lamy Z27 converter. It's a nice – I like the matte. I like that it's yes. matte. It looks nice. Um, it, it's It's – you know, it may not be the color for everybody, but I think it's quite attractive. I think it's a nice, a nice option. It's a nice, colorful option. Yes. For Lamy. Yes. Um, absolutely. Whenever they come out with color, it's always popular. Um, I think this is going to be a good. This, one this is going to be killer as well. Uh, Lamy Ion in deep dark blue. It's really uh, of pretty. Of course, uh, body and cap made of solid aluminum. Uh, they have a circular brushed matte finish, which is kind of fun. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Different. It's nice. Uh, stainless steel nib with uh, the sleek look exclusive to the series. So the nib uh, that's on the Ion is also on the, the Idios, um, but it is still in- interchangeable with existing Lamy steel nibs. But it does look slightly different. It's a little bit different. It's a little yep. bit fatter, kind of uh, comes up on the sides. Um, of course, comes with a cartridge and your Z27 converter. Uh, nice looking dark blue uh, looking pen. Yeah. So. Cool. Uh, is that it? You got anything else? Um, I don't think so. You sure? No. <laughs> Want to phone, phone a friend? No, I'm good. All right, very good. All right, well, I guess that's it. Thanks for joining us. Tune in next week for more talk about pens, ink, and paper. Check us out on social media as Anderson Pens, and like this video and subscribe to our channel, please. See you next time.